reasons as well. Having that ease of diving into its position and Lapu Lapu being banned away. I'm not too sure how that's going to be affecting the picks coming in towards the table. After that Lemon Lapu Lapu performance mm. against Evo's SG, mm -hmm. I think you wouldn't really just... Uh, you wouldn't want RQ Hoshi to have that certain hero on their side. And Mathilda is banned here for the side of RQ Hoshi. Now, I really think that for them, they just don't want these er these heroes that have a mid-game spike to just come out here for the side of Omega Esports. I mean, you're saying that, but, but I don't see the Natalia ban just yet. I, I don't know if RQ Hoshi is willing to actually deal with it or Omega. Oh, yep, Omega, Omega decided to ban it out. I, I'll, I'll, I'll swear. Just heard you. I felt that as you were talking about it, it was also a split-second decision because they almost came down the wire, right? It was like, okay, if we don't ban the Natalia here and we get rid of something like a Jawhead or a Benedetta here that RQ picks up, how can we make it back, right? Like, what's the combo with the Natalia? And that's just something that Coach uh, Dale or uh, Vito here at M2 did not want to deal with. Instead, they went with the Yelly Hay special. It's the Selena. And, of course, Mr. Fundamentals' favorite hero right now is the Jawhead. Mm -hmm. R7, on the other hand, really just goes for the Benedetta. Now, there are a lot of understandings, different understandings in how to use the Benedetta. Some use her as a damage side lane. Some use her as an off tank. Mm -hmm. Now, in your opinion, like Gideon or Leo, let's just throw it to Leo. I've been asking you a lot of questions. <laughs> I might be a burden. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Do you think that is the off tank Benedetta much effective, more effective than the damage Benedetta? Okay, so an example of an off tank Benedetta would be uh, like flap theses from the group stage. That's right. right? That's right. Uh, that just refuses to die. And um, the damage type um, Benedetta is something that we may have seen from the likes of uh, DMX whenever they got it back then, when uh, the boys from Brazil were still around. So yeah, I'm guessing the answer is yes. There is uh, some value in uh, the Benedetta that just refuses to die because it plays the same role as a Lapu Lapu, mm -hmm. right? Like like what Gideon would call the Chad Lapu Lapu, just face off against three people, four people, not planning for it, and then winning anyways. Okay. Excuse me, it's called Alpha Chad. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, there, yeah. there are betas, and then there are Omegas, but now that was an Alpha Chad Lapu. There you go. Absolutely, but yeah, let's. I want to. I want to keep up with with the current draft so far because again, we, we're seeing the one one here showed up, showing up extremely extremely early here. We don't exactly know whether it's off lane or probably in the jungle, but. Based on what we've seen so far, it goes into the offlane. Claude has been the next band. Farsa has been the next band. I wouldn't be too surprised if Lo Yi or Kagura is going to be the next band for Omega, followed up by RRQ Hoshi just saying, you know what? We might as well just get rid of the Roger, right? I agree right here. And you can see a very high mobility composition coming from the side of RRQ Hoshi. They took the lane, something that Omega Esports could also play. Of course, with that being said, we do see the bands coming to fruition. You mentioned about the Lo Yi. It's immediately axed away. Mm -hmm. Right now, RQ Hoshi down to their last ban. They're probably thinking about banning another jungler, and that is going to be the Hayabusa. Ooh. Hayabusa call, has call. been rising a bit. Uh, well, is really rising in terms of picks oh, yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah. So, a lot of players just want to go for that. And right now, Omega Esports, they need to choose their second to the last hero. Yeah, I think the rise of Hayabusa is coming mm. off of the fact that there's a lack of bodies, mm. meaning Popol Kupa doesn't see much play, there's no sun, literally no sun in uh, M2, <laughs> and um, yeah, I again, <laughs> I hope so too, right? Yeah. But again, a lot of these fights happen in tight enclosed spaces, and they end up in odd chases. So who does that good? Who does that well? That's Hayabusa, so I guess that's why a lot of teams uh, have the stock built up. But right now, Second to last pick for Omega Esports is going to be the Ruby in the side lane. And then for RQ Hoshi rounding it out, what are they missing? They need a support hero in mid. And uh, they already have their jungler. They need another side laner. Mm, at this point in time, I mean, they've taken away quite a number of good ones and also kind of bit themselves in the back uh, in that situation where getting rid of the Claude might not exactly been the best. So having a go Ooh. for the carry, this is a really risky move, but we'll see the last one is going to be Kagura. Oh, actually, wow. it's going to be the Eudora. They rhyme, though. Yeah, I heard that wrong. I don't blame but, you. Ooh, this is, this is, in, this is going to be spicy. an interesting one. Is very, this very spicy. going to be Benedetta on Psycho? We did see this 
in the group stages. Very, very likely that he might just be on this Benedetta. Good call right there. And, you know, this is the second carry that we are seeing. The very first one being picked up by the side of EVOS SG. Now, the problem the other time is that the lack of tank and, of course, they pay the price. But it does force the Benedetta to play a little bit more defensively as well. Doesn't Don't, don't you guys think? Um... I mm, I would like to agree with that. However, there are like it, it. It depends on certain conditions. Are they going to be playing on the top side of the map? Are they going to play on the bottom side of the map? Is Benedetta going to go with the opener where she cuts the midway first before rotating back up? There's a lot of different openings that Benedetta can do, which I think is what makes her so versatile and what makes everybody kind of want to first pick her in these situations. Mm -hmm. Mark Hoshi, they have their draft locked. Omega Esports. They picked the Roger for their last pick. In terms of the drafting, how are you guys taking this? Let's start with you, Gideon. Mm, I'm thinking, uh, I'm leaning more a little bit towards RRQ because, again, their composition is a lot easier to pull off. However, Omega, a lot of mechanical work going to be put into it. So that that's a possibility to actually mess up. So that's why I'm leaning more towards the easier comp to pull off. Leo? I will go uh, the other way. This is a fork road, mm -hmm. and I take the Omega Esports route because their lineup looks very 2021. It looks very M2, right? It, it covers all the bases. You know exactly where, who is going, and it makes sense to me. So I'm saying Omega. Yeah, and uh, I, I honestly can't choose one, but if I have to pick, I'm also going with Omega Psy for the moment here, as I could definitely see that they have pretty much of a clear cut way to just go in for certain picks. And for the... Carry to be activated, it does take a little while. We talked about the clearance speed, and well, I want to see it uh, come online, but how soon can it come online? So we will head on to the Celestial Palace, and gentlemen, please take the floor. <laughs> Here we go, RQ Hoshi versus Omega Esports. Starting it off, let's figure out exactly what's going on. This pause here gives us time to understand who's laning where. Of course, Vin for sure taking the mid lane. You got R7 up top. And uh, yeah, I think when it comes to the problem of the clear speed, uh, there's a reason why the support here or the mid, the roamer, let's call it the roamer, mm -hmm. is always going to come try to visit whoever's playing that carry. That, I think that's going to be key here. I mean, uh, yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, the big question is when you have a, a weaker, or sorry, not a weaker, but a susceptible uh, side laner mm -hmm. like carry. Vulnerable. Uh, vulnerable, that's the word. Yes, yeah. perfect, perfect. And you, you want to have mid priority. Push in that wave, be able to rotate first because as long as you're there first, you can set up, you can get set your feet deep in those trenches so that when your opponents come to attack, you have a very fortified position and you also know exactly where to kind of position yourself. Mm. Yeah, let's also talk about the level for spikes as well when we come down to where it's uh, a full-blown fistfight team and as they are contending for maybe perhaps the first turtle, right? Like, I... I think it's really interesting where the Aurora stands right here because you on the opposing end you have the jaw hit as well as the Selena, which of course poses a threat. But that one shot potential also when uh, one one tries to go up in the air, tries to execute uh, the ultimate, and you, you try to catch her as soon as you can before mm -hmm. she can do anything else, and everyone just collapse on her. That might just be the formula. Which RQ. which which I understand now. If RQ did not pick up the Eudora then they would all the more just lose early and mid. Having the Yodora kind of shores up that level 4 spike because they kind of have a dead hero in carry. A level 4 carry doesn't perform very different from a level 2 carry or a level 6 carry. I mean, you can honestly say that for pretty much every other marksman except for Yi Shin Shin, whose ultimate is more utility than anything else. True, and Wan Wan. That's, that's the reason why she's still, she's still relevant. Mm -hmm. As soon as you can hit crossbow of Tang, you are invulnerable. So technically, you can just go pew, 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 pew. Not the same for Carrie. Carrie is always going to be in trouble even if she hits her ult. So, yeah, most definitely they are going to rely very heavily on Vin. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Because from Omega's side, like it, this is going to be an execution problem. Can you land those abyssal arrows? Can you be aggressive early on? And I think that might be, oh, that's going to be really, really difficult here. Um, but, you know, Psycho uh, did actually take the, uh, Psycho did take the Benedetta first. So he clears out that mid wave as soon as possible, allowing Ling to kind of rotate down to get that blue. And while the rest of the team is just going to make sure, hey, I'm going to push those waves as soon as possible.
Yeah, we do see a lot of pressure going on towards the one one side, and I, I think it's still pretty much decent that we see some clear rotations on the 2-2-1 two, two, setup coming mm -hmm. from the side of Omega Esports. So this Ruby will be self-sustaining for the moment, and well, what's to say that Ling possibly will be having a lot of all these great vision. We're going to be going on another pause as we talk through things. Now, a double execute setup coming from the side of Archeosio also poses a little bit of that early trap too. Mm. That is something to note. So yeah, now uh, that we have a little bit more uh, better vision on what things are looking like for both teams, this is a roaming Benedetta. So it's neither the that off tank Benedetta, nor is it like the full on damage Benedetta. It's something in between. It's something that's looking to use parry to actually stun someone, like bait them in, so that you know the likes of the carry here can actually just go ham. I mean, of course, but I, I think the, the best role to call it is the mid, is the mid laner, you know? Because the, it, essentially, what you want the Eudora to do is actually be that initial roaming, because she can't, like, Eudora can chase, sure, but who's going to initiate those picks and chances to take them out and abuse those double executes? Eudora! She chunks them all out, puts them on one HP, bam, press of a button, didn't have to do anything else. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I meant Benedetta. Benedetta uh -huh. and Yodora are going to be working to keep mid in control, yes. And then... Uh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, what I'm gotcha, guessing gotcha. Is Benedetta gotcha. is going to be using those sword intents mm. to actually act like a Baksha, to have additional mobility, right? Like, that's, that's not true. fair. That is an off-kit dash. That's not in anywhere of your skills. Yeah, and uh, of course, it'll be really annoying to deal against. And RQ side of things... It's really interesting that they found out about this formula in this uh, game one to try to throw the side of Omega off. Mm -hmm. But uh, when we talk about scaling as well, I I'm just looking at most of all these one-on-one -on -one, uh, that has been playing in the entirety of the playoffs as well as the group stages. If you just give them a little bit more room towards the late game, hey man, th this thing is going to shred you apart. That's a good question now. There's a marksman on either side. You have the carry, which by the way has been a menace in every meta game she was ready for that she was in. Um, first pick, uh, first phase bannable uh, in years past. Uh, you have the one one, which is the current flavor of the month. Gideon, I gotta ask you, man. When it comes to the 15, 20 minutes, if it does get to that point, if we go the distance, who has better scaling? I think in these situations, people who have better scaling would definitely lean a little bit more. Ah, actually, it's an overall thing. But hold on, let's check out. Okay, no fights going on. Okay, so when I, when I talk about scaling, we're talking about the two main heroes that scale on either side. But you also have to kind of look at the builds that everybody else, else goes through. I do think RQ Hoshi scales better into the game because they have more relevant heroes in comparison to Omega, where some of them are just going to fall off completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. again, we were talking about, like, Selena. Whenever Selena... Selena is bad. She's so bad. But on the but other side, good, though. yeah, uh, Eudora though, she just she has a stun and it's point and click. So yeah, it's just much better. Totally understand. Right now, there's a fight that's waiting oh. to break out, both top and in mid. I wonder. Oh, they're gonna oh. catch one. That's going to be. Oh, that's gonna be flicker out. Heath burning it already. Two minutes in, and the first turtle is gonna be started in by Psycho. Such a great reaction coming from the side of Heath, as he has already read the situation well enough. And keep in mind that there's also gonna be that link. If he sets up a perfect a tempest on towards some of these team fights, it could be a pretty huge one out there. And when we talk about these two sides, of course, it, it, it's definitely gonna be hard to tell. Like, okay, which one gets activated first when we talk about the marksman? Because honestly, the carry is going to take a little bit of time before getting uh, things like the Golden Staff or the Demon uh, Hunter Sword or stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like back to what was being mentioned by Gideon, it's a little bit more easier to execute compared to Omega. Yeah, and especially at the highest levels, right? Uh, you you want to minimize your possibilities of making that mistake. And the more that you can minimize it, the higher chance of more consistency you can receive. Oh, here it comes. There's going to be four members from Arakiyoshi coming in. Oh, and they're so aggressive. Lemon gets taken down first. Blood here drawn by Hajizi plus the turtle. Ooh. And that's going to be some revenge from Albert taking out Mr. Fundamental himself. That's going to be two going over to RQ Hoshi taking down Kenji. And are they done? The answer is yes. Omega Esports don't want more of this. All I gotta say is, yowch.
big ouch. I mean, Omega, they saw two of their guys go down so fast. Hajiti is like, nah, get me out of here. I don't want any of that no more. Yeah, and R7 arrives to the scene and he's like, okay, big dragon coming through. And oh, uh, you know, the case is pretty much close right there. So TD1 at the very moment, honestly, the, the small little lead that they are getting from the side of RQ, Hoshi can still be contested right here in this. Uh, sort of wait, but Unstoppable Force has already been used up. Ooh, defensive Electo final blow right there by Psycho, saving himself. And yeah, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing from Omega Esports here. They're building up their confidence. They did lose that big team fight uh, inside the Turtle Pit earlier. They are maintaining this small uh, gap to RRQ Hoshi, about 200, 300 gold. But right now, we're looking to how RRQ Hoshi can kind of make that gap a little bigger. What big move will they do next? Or will they just let Omega Esports go in and make them pay uh, with a counter attack? Mm, I think if I was in Omega's position, I'm starting to look for picks around buff timings, which is going to be like you're targeting Ling to make sure, hey, if Ling is on the purple is on the purple buff, I want to look to try and punish him as he's uh, trying to clear that area of the jungle. And if not, oh, he's not there. Let's rotate down to bottom side until they get caught out. Speaking of getting caught out here, Hajizi has just arrived, but instant response coming from Lemon just to flicker away. I think both of these teams kind of have this like interesting side quest of yeah besides these big neutral objectives we also want to take down these side lane marksmen and now Heath takes quite the blow but he's saying sir can I have some more he wants to go for another fight because he does have his ult on and oh no that's gonna be Psycho barely oh. getting away oh and the delay damage from the trap and the slow taken in oh Yelly Haze just catches him off you know yeah. talk about really unlucky there because he does use the final blow to try and negate the damage, but unfortunately, it's just like literally point, uh, point two seconds off from the delayed damage, but the fight is already beginning. Heath is going to make the run for it. And R7 here in half dragon form, able to push people back because he still has some shine energy. Oh, it resets. Kurtizi here putting a beat on him, and they are going for what I think is the second turtle of the game. It's taking quite a while, and Hajizi, oh, he says the coast is clear, but for how much longer? Well, I believe that uh, it's pretty much clear for him for the taking at the moment if we look at it, but they are focusing on towards Kanji. Instead, they do get the turtle, but a 2v1 commencing down towards the bottom side doesn't result too much, oh. but here comes the big one. Oh no, Vin here trying to save his life, and all from behind, in comes Hajizi. The machine is online, and so far, they have gone to building enough confidence to mess with Albert, but some breathing room for the King of Kings here, their jungler. He's able to get his purple at least. Yeah, he's got the purple. He immediately goes in for a little wander as well. Now, going for the invasion, he's still going to be chased up. So, you know, Ling doing Ling things. He could easily move around. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those situations where it's like, oh, yeah, we've got a catch on it. Oh, yeah, it's Ling. Oh, that's so much fun. He just jumps away and makes a full rotation down towards our top or bottom side and we can't catch up. Fun stuff, fun stuff. But I think RRQ at this point in time, as long as they kind of just maintain uh, the gold differential to about 2 to 3k, it's going to be relatively fine. Omega won't be able to kind of force situations on top of RRQ Hoshi unless they get a catch. Yeah, here you can see already, right? We're about seven minutes into this game. How disciplined and how good these two teams are. Oh. Hold up! That's going to be some burst damage laid down onto Vin, but he doesn't go down without a fight. Yelly Hayes destroyed. Tempest of Blades here chasing him down. That's Albert looking for one. Psycho finds Hajizi. That's going to be a shutdown onto the Roger, and they are sitting neck and neck, four to four. But... All this time, Omega Esports was just setting up a push. Oh, there's more than Ruby has already arrived, and they're already chasing right in. Psycho caught in between, but they are trying to make an escape oh. out of that. R7 waiting in the bushes. Oh, using the tail of the dragon. They're trying to make Kenji pay. He does get himself a Cyclone Eye, but off camera, that's going to be Lemon taken down. It's a marksman and marksman fight, and that's Curtizi winning down bottom. Definitely, we're going to be having to look it towards itemizations as well. Oui. Because at this point, it's getting a lot more interesting. So, Gideon, just looking at things, we've already got some big stuff coming in the way. Yeah, I, honestly, we're looking at Lemon, who only just has his uh, endless battle here. But we're looking over at Cartesi. He's already got uh, he's already got the Demon Hunter sword on top of the boots, on top of that corrosive scythe. So he's going to be pretty relevant into this game. He might be he might not be doing the most amount of damage, but at the very least, he's slowing them down for the rest of his team to kind of catch up and take out. 
Mm -hmm. And looking at Hajizi, he is, um, I guess, halfway through his endless battle as they go for this turtle, the very last oh. in the game. Ooh, oh. Looking for it. There you go. They take the turtle, and just like that, it's a Mexican standoff. It's just who's going to pull the trigger first, who's going to jump in with their ults and start it strong. And I think in this situation, without R7, without R7, Omega Esports has the range advantage, especially with the reach that the Abyssal Arrow has. Yeah, and he's all the way on the other side of the map, and they've already understand that. Oh! oh flicker right in! Ejector onto one! That's going to be Vin blasted down by four members of Omega Esports. That's that was huge. I Absolutely mean, huge. It's just a mistake on Vin's side. He threw out the he threw out the stun and realized, oh, I got nothing left. I already flickered out of the way. This this doesn't mean anything. And he just took full advantage, flickering forward an unstoppable force. But Curtsy now going to initiate a huge fight, and that's going to be a double pickoff if for our Omega just to get that return kill. Look at that five to eight, and it's only a two K difference. It's so clinical. These two teams, the way they play. Uh, I mean, this cliche has been mentioned. I'm pretty sure I'm beating a dead horse, but it's so chess-like, right? I'll give up my pawn, you can have a rook, but then after that, I'll take a bishop. That's what this 5-8 is looking like, especially with this, you know, relatively small 3k lead. Indeed, but for the RQ Hoshi side, they're slowly losing pieces after pieces on an unequal term. And speaking of which, they're going to be taking this oh. buff if they don't do anything about it. Ooh, that's going to be Psycho coming in between four members. He wants it. Kenji trying to look for a good hook, and he finds it. In comes oh, right easy, but that's that's going to be a stun psycho pays the price. R7 says, get out of our jungle. We don't want y'all here. But Hajizi wants more. Does he have the support? Yes, he does. Oh, they're waiting. They're waiting. They say we're calling it tough. Mm, nah, it's not worth it at this point because, again, their main target here is Cartesi. As long as he has his ult, it's just not worth going for anybody else unless it's maybe a Yelly Haze. But Yelly Haze is barely in the fight or even Kenji. But even Kenji has his ult still up. That's right, and uh, with that being said, we're looking at Omega Esports side. Now that they are so much more up ahead after a couple of all these sort of picks, they're starting to feel a lot more confident about taking every single thing that they have inside the jungle. All they can do is just wait for the right moment to strike in. We do have the Lord up available, but over here, a little bit of a slight 1v1 between Albert as well as Kenji. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just the battle of swords and sights, and here comes Lemon Tempest of Blades. Barely misses. Oh, he's got some dashes here. He's trying to grab. Oh, there you go. Full range stun here by Yelly Hayes. Going to be using the dashes, trying to get out of there. Not enough to save Lemon. That's one for free. Oh, this while they were going for the Lord. Psycho goes down. How easy takes him. R7. Here comes our seven. Oh, no. a dragon. A dragon helps the Lord get stolen by R7. That's going to be R7 surviving. Oh, I think it's worth it already. I think it's worth it already. Crossbow of Tang. Four members down. Traded off for the Lord. Oh, no way. No absolute way. Even though they do get the Lord, just look at the Ruby right down below. Like, this Lord doesn't mean a thing at all after getting snatched away, but at least it buys some time for some RQ Hoshi. I mean, they're up by five towers at this point. RQ Hoshi has not been able to kind of break through. Omega will be stopping that Lord right in its tracks. And I mean, if they had more of a wave onto mid and topside, they might have been able to get both inhibitors at the same time. And I think RQ Hoshi, this game is slowly slipping out of their hands. I hate to say it, but stealing that lord at that very moment is the equivalent of using a band-aid on a bullet wound mm -hmm. <laughs> it held them back for what 30 seconds tops and they're still maintaining map pressure yeah and of course uh with that they only gain maybe very slight edges out of that by just putting their bodies at where all these sort of bullets are coming through and they just have to do something just to have that knee-jerk response and well at it I guess they just have to wait for another sort of opening at this moment, which is not going to come by, not until 20 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. Speaking of 20 minutes, um, Gideon seems to know what timers are like. And Gideon, what's your feel, man, right now? Before this fight happens, oh, it actually has started too late. Curtisi gets oh, blasted it's not over. It's by Vin. Not over. They're looking for some revenge here. Vindication. That's what Omega Esports is looking for. They take out Yelly Hayes. R7 is a man on a mission. They're going to blast this turret and push 
Omega Esports back in. Now, that timer, man, 13 minutes in, how long until we see Lemon pop off? Uh, I mean, honestly, let, I, let's let's double check the items so I have a better idea of what exact, how, where, where is he with that? Lemon is currently at 6,000 gold. He's got two items, one, oh, both pretty defensive. He doesn't even have the golden staff yet. Mm, I think at this point of time, he needs to get the golden staff to have that major kick of damage. So he'll probably get that at the 42,000 42, gold mark. So my guess is going to be the 16. Ooh. or fit, I, I, I'll give him a bit of credit if he doesn't die and, and works perfectly. 15, okay. 30. Ooh, very close. And that's Kenji flickering in. Enough to save him. Tempest of Blades. Oh, no. Albert don't want none of this. And Hajizi putting a beat on him. There's the unstoppable force from behind. Can they juggle the aggression from underneath the turret? Kenji still alive. No. Lemon about to get destroyed. Hajizi gets him. Heath puts the nail in the coffin. It's a trade so far. Hajizi what? for Lemon. The fight continues. Kenji's looking low. That's a blast onto Heath. Vin takes him down. This turret still stands. And only RRQ, only RRQ can win fights that way. Going back and forth, back and forth. And they are just forcing fights by hook or by crook. There's no other way to go about it. They don't care if they lose one member as long as they get more in return. I'm not gonna lie, Vin's getting, is starting to become a bit of a problem for Omega in this point. And I think that's where the executional part of it is starting to kick in because as you can see, Yelly Hayes, he's not landing as many Abyssal Arrows. And even if he does, he's probably not gonna be able to capitalize on it in comparison to Vin who just goes in full combos. You walks away and says, R7, go get him, boy. Yeah, and we've already seen purchases like the Blade of the Hepta Seas coming in as well. So, very much interesting as we hit towards the 15 minute mark. You can see that we are having pretty much an equal level terms after so many fights. Our Kyohoshi, not in the number of kills, but the goal has already been equal. Oh, yeah. Barely a thousand now, barely a thousand. RQ Hoshi, the King of Kings, have figured out this strategy. And just like that, I think uh, Gideon is on the mark pretty much about, what, three minutes away since he did say. And right now, Albert. He, Omega Esports isn't as confident with the Lord this time around. Oh, yeah, definitely not. I mean, honestly, I was off by a full 30 seconds there. Lemon just got his Winds of Nature, and that's going to be a huge, huge buy because that means Cartesian as well as Kenji can't take full advantage of him. Hmm. Things are looking relatively difficult at the very moment. While a couple of all these abyssal arrows being sent out, Demon Hunter Sword being purchased by Hajizi. So a little bit more spike coming in for the Roger, which is definitely great news for Omega at this point of time. Yeah. You see a little bit of split push being done by RQ Hoshi. Oh, yeah. And they're still not letting their eyes off as Omega Esports still eyeing on towards the Lord. Yep, that's the uh, advantage that Albert has here as the Ling. He's able to push these lanes, cut him where he needs to without any punish, actually, because of Finch Poison. That's exactly what he's doing. But it looks like Omega knows he's up there. Omega wants to make the most of the situation and is trying to force a fight with RRQ. What they're trying to do is catch one off at least, and that's a good minus one. A minus one goes miles in yeah. situations like this. This is the situation situation that they are looking for, making sure that somebody takes good care of the side lanes, and as many of these Omega Esports members go there, they will try to find a setup over on towards the Lord side. Oh, wait, wait, and, a fight. Oh. is there not a fight? No. Oh, no, they backed nah, away. Nah, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, they catch one. That's full stuns onto Vin. Oh. Honestly, at this point in time, it's a game of cat and mouse. Whoever gets picked off first is going to essentially win or lose the fight. But I have to point out here, it's 9 to 14. It's three to, there are three towers ahead. There are literally five kills ahead as well. And it is 49.2K to 49.8K. Where is the disparity here? There is almost no disparity at all, even though in every single numbers and two turtles on top of all of those stats, how is Omega not ahead? RQ has just been really proficient in their way of farming. Mm -hmm. If I may build on that, it's a game of cat and mouse where neither is sure which they are, right? It, it, it's, uh, it's also a blind game of cat and mouse and uh, it's, it's very important to check your bushes right now. And the one person or one team who has uh, the advantage when it comes oh. to the range and the vision is Omega Esports. Now Heath catches Psycho. Oh, they catch Kenji off guard in the Omega Esports side of the jungle towards the purple. That's a huge minus one for Omega. I wonder how Omega's gonna 
just recover from here. That's right. A big opening that they have managed to find just by having the Benedetta pulling all the attention. And now they fixate their attention on towards Lord. Instead, they want Omega to commit. Without that Ruby, things are definitely going to look a little bit haywire in this refine. Mm -hmm. Sideways, if you ask me, sideways for Omega Esports. This time, that's a huge chunk of damage, of lifesteal, and of crowd control. And I think what Omega Esports is trying to do is reset. Mm, I think at this point, it's 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 about finding the opportunity to get the angle. Because right now, look at that bottom wave. It's pushing in naturally. As long as RRQ just kind of chill and just wait, somebody is going to have to deal with that slowly building up wave. And RRQ, they don't mind doing it because they are scaling towards the late game. And Omega, they, they've run out of time at this point, And they have to solely believe in their own mechanics to actually win them out in these bigger fights. That's right. And now we're hitting 18, uh, 30. Ooh. With most of the members already hitting level 15, and I, I guess this is where it's all about completing your items at this point in time. Mm -hmm. At M2, or at least, right? And even the playoffs specifically, when you reach the 18, 20 minute mark, that's basically a marathon. Like, this is longer than usual already. And right now, with Kenji back on the map, they have eyes on Albert since he is pushing down bottom. I think Omega Esports is just going to jump the gun. They're just going to go for it saying, just start it up, just start it up. Just hope that Vin isn't there and that Albert isn't ready with the retribution. Oh, this is going to be a big news here. Ruby is being pretty occupied, but they understand once again, they're going to go in for another reset, but Heap though, playing with fire. Oh, he got caught out. That's at least one ultimate from Vin. They have the timer. They have to make sure that inside, deep inside, they know what it looks like for the opponent, what kind of firepower they're packing. And... Wow, again, they're back to the game of how low can you get lowered before the opponent actually jumps in, bites. Yeah, and uh, Lemon, although he's 60%, easily could just find his way to live steal Malefic Roar on the hands of Curtizi. Mm. And yeah, very much interesting. Just keep your eyes like, while, the, while this, you know, boomerang game of, uh, of who can get the Lord lowest before resetting, just, just look on the opposite side of the map here because you can see that Ling as well as Ruby are both trying to make sure those lanes are clean. And RQ, simple macro here, just get away pushing on their side because again, if, they walk, if uh, Omega Esports walks out too far, you can punish. If one person goes over, you start the Lord. You put them between a rock and a hard place, and eventually somebody is going to crack. Yeah, and if you do look at the goal differentials, it honestly doesn't matter at this point in time where most of the people have already completed all of all oh, their items. And yeah. th being up ahead means that they are shoving way harder towards the side of Omega. Dude, check out that graph, man. Omega was just dominating the first half of the game, and then RQ Hoshi just slowly catching up. If only Omega was able to close out that game. Man, they must be kicking themselves like, oh, if only we had that Lord, and it didn't get stolen just now. Mm -hmm. That's uh, essentially the story of the past five minutes. The past five minutes have been RRQ Hoshi just applying pressure on Omega Esports. And some part of it, I believe, is just conditioning. Like, slowly but surely, RRQ Hoshi has been saying, all right, if you don't do anything about this, Albert's just going to push and penetrate your lane down bottom. And right now, again, back to the game of Hot Potato onto this Lord. It's a matter of a lot of resources. How much are you willing to put on the line to be able to take this huge objective? Now, Psycho at half health, and now it's Lemon they send over. Oh, oh this is going to be a push. Yeah, and uh, that's my attention uh, actually fixating on towards the lower side of the map, and with that, RQ still wants to play this Dance of Death. <laughs> How oh, wait, are we going wait. at it, finally? Oh, they're going in. This is no turning back. That's Heath getting blasted. He's still alive. R7 with the Black Dragon form. Tempest of Blaze in here. That's going to be a knockup on the Psycho. R7 being pushed oh. back. That's going to be Vin taken down by Hajizi. Oh, it's looking grim. Heath destroyed from the back line by Psycho. That's going to be two for one. Lemon destroyed by Hajizi. And now the Wolf, the Machine, is on the chase. Psycho. Oh, he needs the Cyclone Eye. Oh, he's going to get it. But inside the orange buff pit, that's going to be the Hajizi run. Taken down one last one for three. Is this enough space for the Lord? Uh, this should be plenty of space for the Lord, actually. Unless Albert makes a fat steal here, which I don't think he's going to do. Mo in most situations, things are just going to cut the wave. Uh, but considering the wave still has a oh. long way to go. Oh, was, oh no, the burst oh, is man. just too much. That's what, four members of Omega Esports? 
Oh man, our, our Kyohoshi's very own R7 was a little too optimistic. Yeah. Absolutely dropped the ball right there. You can see Albert can only fly around just to see this Lord go in the hands of Omega Esports. And I'm pretty sure the Philippine fans here rejoice after that long dance. And it all started from sending Lemon right down below. And Omega Esports knows, okay, we can actually catch them out of position. And that's where that three for one trade didn't go anywhere as planned for RQ. I think RQ at this point in time, it's just uh, it's a game of cat and mouse because, again, there's nothing much they can really do about it in most of these situations if they put themselves too far out and they get caught out by Heath. And on, you, you know what? Speaking of Heath, in that last fight, he preemptively flickered forward thinking somebody would be further deeper into the brush. Ends up <laughs> they were standing right in front of him and he just yeah. blew his flicker for no reason. But here comes Luminous Lord. Oh, but he got away with it anyways, right? Here we go now. Finally, the first... Inhibitor taken down, and it's going to be on the side of RQ Hoshi. That's going to be quite a few ults spent by RQ to take down Lord alongside that inhibitor up top as well. So it's a two for none, relatively clean for Omega Esports. Impressive how they're able to just re center and just gather themselves once more, especially after earlier how RQ Hoshi was slowly turning the whole map blue. Right, and now Psycho tries to cut off the way, but oh! oh one big That's going to be Hajizi running away. Immortality popped in here. Vin destroyed by Kurt the Hartizi. And now Hajizi, that's going to be R7 taking him down. It's so far a 1-4-1. One, one. And right now, Albert destroyed once more by the 1-1. One, one. And they're going in. That's a lot of Lemon. damage coming in from Lemon. That's Heath. Mr. Fundamental destroyed. And right now, that's another pull. Lemon survives. Oh, I think he's going to heal up because they're still ready. They're going for this half health on all members of Omega Esports. They may have been going in too deep, and I think R7. the investment has already been spent. R7 destroyed. That's going to be one. Oh, hey, LEA, that's going to be two. They're trading back and forth. Two members left. Mm, good plays. Good plays coming in from RQ Hoshi. Even though they had a bad situation, they just have to make sure that they understand who scales into this game. Okay, Albert dies. Who do we have to depend on? Lemon. If you have to throw your body in uh, to buy some time, then throw your body just like what they're doing out now. It's going to be a 2v2 situation. Oh, they triggered the crossbow tang, but Psycho gets away. Oh, oh no. All range. Oh, that's going to be a pull by Kenji. And that's Lemon. That's Lemon finally shut down. And that's two defenders. Though Vin is back in here, so that's some wave clear on the side of RQ. Hoshi. Just look at it, 50 over seconds if you go down at this point of time. RQ Hoshi at the very least still have three members up, so this is where Omega Esports can continue to apply the pressure. And more than about two minutes in towards the game, we'll see possibly the final lord, but they might not even oh, need it right now. A left of final blow, use to clear the wave, but Kurtizi will take down the turret. Anyways, what is this? About a minute away from the third Lord, and Lemon's gonna be coming in on time. So I think for RQ Hoshi, just buckle in. Just just wait for Lemon to come in. And I don't know, man, how, whatever you did with Vin for the first Lord, do that again. <laughs> but at this point in time, if you actually lose at least three members by just snatching the Lord away, yeah, maybe you might get away with you know, that Lord just marching towards the enemy side and you have like a full send of mm. Omega Esports army just at your base by that yeah. point in time. Yeah. So, Kurtizi having one final slot uncompleted, but hey, what's what's to say? I think he really packs a punch at this one time. I think he packs a punch too. I think they all honestly pack a punch. And the real, the real problem right now is that they can't seem to get onto the scaling heroes. Lemon just refuses to die. Albert, he buys so much time, especially when he jumps into the back line here, that Omega Esports can only deal with one problem at a time. And Kenji, he's going to be staying very close to Cartesi more often than not, just to kind of protect him uh, with the I'm Offended and making sure that he taunts the right, uh, the right people just to buy that time to allow Cartesi to at least, at the very least, have enough uh, have enough weakness procs just so they can use his ultimate in a clutch situation. Yep, and uh, we've seen earlier, a crossbow tank is not a confirmed kill. Mm -hmm. Not at all, because of how this Rome uh, Benedetta is playing in right now. That's going to be a fight. I think they're picking. Oh, Vin gets caught out. Oh, he lets out the ult. That's going to be flame shot used already by Yelly Hayes. And Ajizi destroyed by Lemon from the back line. Tempest of Blaze here by Albert. That's going to be trades left and right. Kenji down as well as Hajizi. Two for one. I think they are ripe for the Lord take. Yeah, and we just saw the positioning of Lemon in initially was a little bit questionable, but when he flickered to get that position, to get that 
first opening, it started to make sense where the rest of Archeohoshi will be able to penetrate through uh, from a very awkwardly positioned Omega Esports. Honestly, I'm surprised that Omega didn't just jump onto Lemon there. Like, he was free, and uh, and you can see that the Unstoppable Force was up for gra was up there. They were just waiting out uh, the winds of, nature, uh, winds of nature, but that's just like a second long, so it's kind of on Omega, who I think were in disbelief, like, no way he's doing this. Yeah. This is kind of troll, right? Yeah, again, give carry, what, 1.2 seconds of free hits, especially with full lock items like this. You're in for a bad time, and right now, oh, Albert's stealing oranges now. This is going to be rough for Hajizi when he comes back. Mm -hmm. And you can see Psycho fully roams in towards the mid side as well. They're having two members right to work the lower side of the map. And... This Lord right here is the, the terminator of the entirety of this game, which honestly, Omega Esports hasn't been able to find a safe way to even get a, get a pick in this sort of sense. Yeah, no, it, it's because of, again, the vision that Omega Esports has is trumped by the mobility that our, our Yukoshi has right now, right? Like, again, Gideon mentioned the forward flicker by Heath. If he only knew uh, that there was no one in the bush. I think Yelly Hayes hasn't warded that area yet. If he only knew that he was right in his face, he could have used that mobility to close oh the gap. But right now, oh, nice catch. That's going to be Lemon caught by the ejector. And he's going to get blasted down. Heath trying to run, save his life. And he survives. But look at Albert. Albert looking to just cut the waves. Oh, it's, 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 a, it's a silent it's a cold war between Kenji and Albert. Mm -hmm. Both sides just not letting up here, but at the end of the day, who wins out in these later stages? I mean, Yelly Hayes, he's going to take some damage. Saiku is just going to chase him down, and uh, nope, the rest of the team back off, and uh, they could, I mean... I don't think Lemon wants to fight without his alt here, so Psycho has got to be real careful. Psycho right in between all these members of Omega Esports, not looking all too great. As much as he has immortality, he can buy only very a few seconds in towards this match, but he's trying his best to make it out a lot. Lemon, as much as he's nearby. What? But he's what? Not getting out of this. What? I take my words back. Psycho things. Madman. He is, he's getting away with too much here. And I think, you know, Omega and RQ Hoshi, like, it, it's in Omega's hands to look for this engagement here. And uh, RQ, as you can tell, clearly will not initiate anything unless they can guarantee that pick. And at this point, Vin, he's a little too scared to walk forward because the moment he does, Heath is going to unstoppable force, ejector him back in towards, uh, towards the enemy team. And there's really not a lot of counterplay to that other than hope that he doesn't fly back too far or the rest of Omega can't catch up after he flickers. Gentlemen, we are already hitting 30 minutes of play. And oh, it's Boy. Pretty much on even grounds at the very moment. Everyone's just buying forces at Which this Which is time. impressive because our Yoshi, they have no more turrets. And they're still this aggressive. Yeah, and as much as this tree turret stands from the side of Omega Esports, it's currently untouchable. Yeah, so it, it's more of, a, again, a standstill right now. Yeah. Headlock, and then hold oh. up, RQ Hoshi. That's going to be our seven. Black Dragon oh. Form catches Yelly Hayes off. Lemon finishes him off. That's already a minus one. And looking at the map in general, Omega Esports not going to find an easy pickoff just like that. There's no vindication anywhere soon. Mm -hmm. Not even Psycho. Again, we know Psycho runs away like this. This is what he does. Yeah, he just gets away with everything on the line. Just pulling every aggro that he can possibly get. And this constant spit push will not stop at all. But Lemon, he could possibly solo this if Omega does not pay attention. I mean, Omega definitely knows that this is going on. However, they have to send members to the other side of the map. And Albert, he's able to control oh. this. And he's going in for the full engagement. Oh, there's going to be heat. His immortality pops inside. He has a few shields to buy time. Oh, good easy. Just in time. Crossbow tank. And they burst him. That's he taking down R7. Where is R7? That's going to be TZ. Oh, Hajizi as well. They're running away. Oh, can Psycho finish him off? Lemon from behind. Kenji gets him. That's Psycho taking down Kurtizi. 1-1 one, one off the table right now. Kenji flickers in, saves himself just in time. And now there's Hajizi. Th that, that's two ch there's two chances that a steal here. Hajizi and Kenji. I don't know. Yelly Hayes needs to start clearing waves. And... Yo, this might be our RQs. I, I feel like RQ is just more confident this time around. Like yeah. it should be. However, the, uh, Selena and those Abyssal arrows could oh. be the game changer. Vin just waiting for the catch. He gets caught out himself. Oh, Vin is still alive because they are going to burst down Yelly Hayes. And Yelly Hayes is still oh. in this. Vin gets destroyed. Hajiji gets him from behind the delayed damage. Gets 
down Yelly Hayes, and there's still 4v3. Hajizi survives. Cycle chasing him. Oh, they're looking for the juke. And oh, what a dodge farm! Oh, they're gonna find them anyways. Kenji's still in this. There's not enough damage from the side of Omega though. Fight's still going on here, going strong. This brawl is gonna go. Kenji finally gets taken out. The ejector out the psycho. This is finally looking good for RRQ. My goodness, Omega, they've got to be real frustrated about this entire situation. Yo, this... just look at the waves oh, that's already oh, crashing right in. Oh. Oh, this is something that Org Yoshi has to watch out for as well. Again, note, they can join fights as long as they want, but if they don't manage their waves, it could end in the blink of an eye. And I think all of these long team fights, it's resulted in, again, more members of Omega coming back. But finally, this is third Lord. I can say confidently, it's going to go definitely to Org Yoshi. Oh! Definitely close, close. I thought there was another Vin situation. Yeah, it almost could have been in that sort of sense with he being so uh -oh. close by. And unfortunately, things are starting to open up for the side of Arkeo Hoshi. Mm. And Omega oh Esports had to back away and retreat, not having Hadizi as well as Kenji around. There's so many switch of itemization going on. Mm -hmm. And we've seen the Rose Cold Meteor being bought there by Hadizi. Yeah. Kurt swapping around. That that last slot is his juggle slot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, it's gonna be important that teams know how to juggle uh, to juggle their items, especially this late. Oh wait, hold on. This is the pick of a lifetime. Bin is getting chunked back, but this could be the fight that they've been looking for. Uh huh. Like the final blow by Psycho, trying to dive in and take out the softies from behind. He is destroyed here by Lemon and Psycho, able to just maintain pressure here. Just escort Lord into this inhibitor, and that's going to be Kenji getting blasted down by Lemon. Ladies and gentlemen, Carry is back. That's gonna be the push on all three inhibitors for Omega Esports. Curtisi taken down Vin. That's gonna be a crossbow of Tang. Hajizi destroyed here. It's just a matter of time. They just need to focus down on the base. And ladies and gentlemen, the King of Kings take game number one after a long drawn out game here in the very last day. Oh, sorry, the last game of day one in the playoffs. 34 minutes, 14 seconds on the clock. This has to be the longest game in the playoff runs thus far. And my oh my, what a comeback coming from the Kings of Kings. Contra, my friend, that is the longest game of all time here. Butters, what do you have to say? I can see you rubbing your eyes like, oh my goodness, I've been staring at the screen for yeah. 30 long minutes. 30 long minutes. And to be honest, I it could have gone both ways. It was a battle of having the less errors and the one one was looking great omega looked great at the early stages of the game they made a few mistakes along the way rq capitalized on it and 